I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru, and this is Leo Says, my opinion piece of the week. Uh, Leo Says 7, we're getting into December here, which means a couple of things. We're getting to the end of 2017, so it's only a natural to kind of start looking back on the year and wondering what's happened, uh, what are the highlights, what are the low points, and also CES is coming. Uh, so obviously you're thinking there about, oh, what new things will we see, what shiny things? Uh, so let's start with the big stuff. Let's start with artificial intelligence. Uh, not really PC territory in this instance, however, because we're talking Tesla. It turns out that Tesla is developing AI chips for its uh, self-driving cars, uh, presumably so they can learn what on earth they're doing and don't require a link to the uh, great computer in the sky, the net, so they can manage themselves better. Uh, I would guess also so they can feed information back to the net. Jim Keller, there is a PC, uh, PC angle. Jim Keller, formerly of AMD and Apple, joined Tesla in 2016, and he's working on hardware. Makes sense, the guy is a chip guy. Okie dokie, so Tesla, big company, uh, cutting edge of technology. Jim Keller, chip guy, developing chips, this will make sense. Elon Musk, obviously the big honcho there. Now, two things. So on the one hand, they're working on AI hardware. On the other hand, and I, I saw um, Elon Musk do this during an interview, he's warned that artificial intelligence could lead to Skynet, the equivalent of you know computer uh, uh, machines running the world. And also, and this is a quote, uh, AI is highly likely to destroy humans and in the process cause World War III. I see what he means. It's that thing of as soon as the machines can stop us from switching them off at the mains, they're going to work out that we are the problem and that's it, bump. And it, once they have awareness, that will take fractions of a second. If you've ever watched a computer playing a, a turn-based uh, game like Dungeons and Dragons, the game is over in the blink of an eye. It's a bit done. Uh, it, it's remarkably quick. And once machines reach a certain point, forget exponential, it's going to be instantaneous. As to what happens then, I mean, it'd be a shame to think we're all over, but such is life. But Elon Musk, he's a clever man. Uh, so if that's what he thinks, there's probably some, you know, something to be concerned about there. So why the hell is Tesla working on AI chips? Uh, are they working on special green safe AI chips? Or is this just on the one hand, that's what he thinks. And on the other hand, this is the commercial reality. Perhaps they have no, no choice but to work on AI chips for their cars, in which case the implication there surely is that Elon Musk is fully aware that AI is going to destroy humanity, and yet the money says he has to work on it regardless, so he knowingly is working on AI, therefore is knowingly working to finish us all off. I, I cannot see any other logical conclusion, and yet that seems the most illogical possible is to build cars for crying out loud. If he was working on, I don't know, well, that Hyperloop of his, if he was working on some sort of a transporter, you know, like Star Trek, you could kind of see it, but electric cars, and for that, we're gonna finish off mankind? Seems a bit harsh to my mind. So let's hope Elon Musk has a third point of view and somehow it reconciles those two other completely separate, divergent, awful aspects of life. Following on from that we're doomed story, we have hard drives, and this is relatively conventional. So today KitGuru's just published a review of a WD-12 terabyte hard drive, did very nicely. Uh, and Toshiba has recently announced a 14 terabyte hard drive. Uh, uses conventional magnetic recording, so not shingled, uh, where they have to overlap things like the, the shingles on a roof. And the significance there is it means it has apparently conventional speed. Shingling slows things down enormously. It's basically good for cold storage and databases where you're just not going to be accessing sorry, records, where you're not going to be accessing databases probably ever. Uh, so data warehouses. But the 14 terabyte hard drive with conventional magnetic recording, nine platters and a three and a half inch form factor. So they're obviously very thin platters, new technology, thin heads. But that is impressive going. The drive is naturally filled with helium. That uh, reduces the pressure between the platters and the heads. That's perfectly, uh, well, that's now, it's actually old hat. Uh, uh, HDST did that a while back when they went from six to seven platters. So this is uh, impressive for one thing and for another thing it shows that the delta between SSDs and hard drives actually is still wide. Uh, if SSDs can't yet, we, we can't buy a two terabyte SSD for sensor one in a four terabyte is just painful. Uh, so forget about eight and 16 terabyte, they're off in the goodness knows when in the future. Uh, so this says that hard drive manufacturers, they've still got some life in them. And I must confess, by the end of 2017, uh, a year or two back, I would have predicted hard drives, it was game over. So that is impressive to see uh, SSD people pick it up, eh? Come on, more. And then we come on to graphics. Now, doing my looking back at 2017, uh, 
for graphics, I, I'm basically just hugely disappointed. GTX 1080 came out in the mid 2016. Obviously that's a significant graphics chip, but while it's impressive, it's not a game changer. It's a die shrink, it's faster, it's done very well for Nvidia, but it was only ever a stopgap. It was when AMD reposts, then we're gonna get Volta and we'll keep on leapfrogging with the technology. And Vega came along and it did next to nothing, as we know. And it was also slow and late, uh, late in terms of the year, slow in terms of clock speeds and performance. Uh, so therefore, we still have the GTX 10 series and, and they continue to linger around. They're doing good work. They're horribly expensive, uh, but it would be nice to move on to the next thing. The thing that can just cream 4K gaming. Uh, but who knows when that's going to happen? So looking back on uh, the year for, of graphics, it's just like well what happened where did the year go yeah it's all good stuff but you know in terms of either prices dropping or giving us more performance or giving us new features it's been just dismal and also vr of course is just what would we say stillborn let's go with stillborn let's go with the polite word uh it's kind of just done nothing has it uh a, a vr headset still horribly expensive the appeal is not there for me anyway uh so the idea of driving a vr headset with with a graphics card rather than two or three graphics cards uh, it's just the, the one thing that might have changed the, the industry just hasn't happened and then vega utterly failed to shake things up and here we are now this is where we make a little bit of a leap because Nvidia has announced the Titan V, which is the fifth Titan. We've had Titan, Titan X, we had the Titan X Pascal, which is also called Titan X, and then we had Titan XP, which was the other Pascal, and now we have Titan V, which at least has a different name for Volta. Uh, $3,000, $2,700, pounds. it's a hulking great big graphics card, but apart from the change of this, the champagne uh, kind of heat shroud, it looks exactly like every other great big NVIDIA card in the market. Obviously, it's only available in a reference design, only available from NVIDIA. You can only buy two of them uh, and all those other things. But broadly speaking, it is a Tesla V100, except the memory control and the amount of memory and the amount of L2 cache have been cut by 25%, and the price has come down from 10000 to 3000 So. If you want to look at it that way, it's actually quite a bargain. But the point is, it's totally irrelevant to PC gamers because it's not for PC gamers. It's for uh, machine learning, artificial, artificial intelligence, going back to that first uh, item. Uh, naturally, people are jumping up and down saying, good God, this proves that NVIDIA... Uh, well, yeah, but it's not really relevant. Whatever AMD had done with Vega would not be anything to do with Volta, uh, this particular Volta, this this use of Volta. The technology inside the Volta, apart from 12 gigabytes HBM2, uh, 5,120 5, CUDA cores, uh, which is significantly more than uh, t uh, Tesla P100 and Titan XP, uh, 640 tensor cores. These are the new fruity things that do AI, uh, about which I know nothing, absolutely nothing. They are totally irrelevant to my world, uh, they may be ruling my world quite soon, but they're not in my PC, and I don't know if they ever will be. 16 phase VRM, 14 teraflops single precision, 112 teraflops tensor performance, which is because they're using some new metric that we don't understand. Uh, and presumably NVIDIA can basically write their own book there because I'm guessing they're in a world of their own. Fabrication process is interesting. It's 12 nanometer FinFET N and the N stands for NVIDIA. TSMC has apparently created a whole new fabrication node for NVIDIA. Wow, I mean, that just says something about the state of the world. Uh, so they've moved on from the previous generation of Titans, but it's a whole different ball game. So the fact that someone's gonna slap it in a PC and see how it games just does not matter because this is not intended for us. The thing I find interesting, however, is there's a rumor going around that Volta GeForce, i.e. without those tensor cores, uh, may be passed over, scrapped, not for the desktop. Uh, the rumor going around is that instead it's going to be Ampere, uh, which would be the next one after Volta, and logically that's going to be essentially Volta using 12 nanometer FinFET, but minus those uh, tensor cores, which obviously would make the GPU significantly smaller, significantly cheaper. Uh, and would take us on a bit further. So if that is what is gonna happen, that's interesting. But to me, on the one hand, Titan V launching and then uh, Titan for the desktop and Ampere coming along, doesn't really mean a whole lot of anything, except that this could be a way uh, Titan V 
be a way for NVIDIA to trial this 12 nanometer FinFET N just to make sure it's right and proper and then start banging out desktop chips. But frankly, NVIDIA could have done that anyway. So I have to say that the Titan V to me is a nothing burger. It's just uh, this thing that is uh, presumably quite impressive. It's horribly expensive. I don't think it's indicative of anything in our world. It is significant in the world of AI. I'm sure scientists are absolutely jumping up and down, clapping their hands with glee. And let's face it, as a research tool, $3,000, $2,700 pounds is just nothing. So it looks like a graphics card, but as far as we're concerned, it's not a graphics card. I hope it's very nice. Here's a funny thing. If you look back at the year and you say, how's it going with the graphics? You'd say to yourself, right, NVIDIA rules the roost. They've got the high end, they've probably got the mid range. If you count GTX 1060 as the mid range, GTX 1060, as far as I'm concerned, dances all over RX 580. But if we're being polite, let's say it's a tie. RX 580 Polaris can just about tie with GTX 1060, leaving GTX 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, and all the uh, Titans off in a league of their own. And fair play. The funny thing is, if you look at the world of Apple, and I don't tend to look at the world of Apple, and you buy a new iMac, it's loaded up with Radeon graphics technology, RX 580, and that can haul Final Cut Pro, the uh, video editing software that Apple produces, along at a ferocious rate. You can do 4K video editing much faster than you can do it with Adobe Premiere using an NVIDIA desktop graphics card. Clearly, it's something to do with the way Apple's hooked in at a low level with AMD hardware and the fact that they design the iMac and they can do what they like. When you consider that uh, AMD, uh, well actually Sapphire uh, made the GPU cards, uh, the graphics cards, uh, but they, the, the Dustin uh, Mac Pro uh, was made by uh, Apple obviously, uh, AMD stroke Radeon hardware, uh, Sapphire was in there and that was a blisteringly fast little machine and also surprisingly efficient and also ran on the edge of what the power supply could produce. Uh, it was to within a handful of watts. Impressive piece of kit, horribly expensive of course, did a very fine job but it's now old. The new iMac is impressive and it runs on Radeon and then we've got the new iMac Pro coming along very soon which is going to be the up to 18 cores of Intel goodness along with Vega graphics and some colossal amount of power that it has to dissipate. That's going to be interesting to see how they work that one out. The point is Apple won't touch Nvidia ever since, was it GeForce 2? Uh, whichever the graphics course it was where they had the, um, the, 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 the chips would peel away from the, uh, from the PCB, solder bump wasn't it? Solder bumps. Uh, ever since then Apple has had nothing to do with Nvidia They've stuck religiously with AMD, which either says that Apple doesn't care about money, which is possible, or it says that Apple knows something that we don't, which is that actually you can make AMD graphics work correctly. And considering that Apple are not stupid and they are colossally valuable and they've got huge amounts of money stashed in various bank accounts around the world, I have to lean towards the latter, which is that Apple is not stupid and you can make uh, AMD uh, graphics chips work properly and efficiently if you hook into them at the correct level. Apple is using AMD. Intel has now obviously got this tie up with AMD as we know. Their mobile chips are going to have Intel processors and AMD Radeon graphics. Uh, so you have to think that Intel is thinking along the same lines as Apple, which is we can make this work and it's going to work well. All the consoles use AMD and yet the desktop for AMD is just a desert and, and just a world of pain. And yes, I am aware that there are AMD fanboys out there. And as a general thing, I do not understand fanboys. I don't understand why you like one make of hardware over another make of hardware. You should want many flowers to bloom. That gives you competition, that helps us all. If something is better, switch across to it. If they do a bad thing, switch again. Switch again. Uh, this thing about sticking with one company through thick and thin, unless you've got some very good reason for doing it, baffles me completely. Uh, so if we take it that AMD on the PC desktop, it's just horrible, a horrible, horrible place for them, then something very strange has happened that I really do not quite understand. Some few months ago, and we don't know when, but sometime between the summer and now, uh, so let's say the autumn, 
uh, AMD revised its RX 560. Now, when they launched RX 560, which is, let's face it, you know, 460, uh, but when they launched 560 in Asia, they apparently called it RX 560D, and it had 14 compute units, so uh, 896 stream processors. The RX 560 in Europe and America and other places, 16 compute units and 1,024 stream processors, a significant extra percentage for a graphics chip that basically is just working its socks off all the time. It hasn't got any spare grunt, it has to work flat out. AMD has decided to cut the number of stream processors in RX 560. So RX 560 has essentially become RX 560 D. Uh, so if you thought you're getting 16 uh, compute units, you're now going to get 14 compute units. I've seen at least uh, one UK e-tailer is actually listing RX 560 and telling you how many processors you get. They're the same price, £120. Here. Uh, uh, so we're not talking like 50 quid cards, we're talking you know, some money. But you have to choose, no, I want that rather than that. And obviously you choose that rather than that because that's got more, therefore it has to be faster than that. But AMD just doesn't seem to care. They've issued, oh, we're terribly sorry about the confusion this has caused. Well, the confusion you've caused, in fairness. And what was wrong with calling it, say, either RX 560D or RX 555? Uh, it's, it's not the same thing. To say it's the same thing and give you a different thing is a bad thing. And this has left a bad taste in many people's mouths. Uh, not surprisingly, the news people around the internets and then YouTube are saying, well, this is just, you know, bad, bad by uh, AMD. And I completely agree. It is very bad. And if the fanboys can defend this, then frankly, they're zealots and they're you know, thick. But the point here is this. It suggests to me that AMD has just given up on the desktop. It suggests they really don't care if they upset their customers because essentially they're sunk on the desktop. And that's a terribly sad statement to make. Really sorry to have to say that, but I think it's true. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Leo Waldock. This is Leo Says.